Hi, everybody. I'm David von Negra, Director of Technology at Matter Supply. It's a great privilege for me to be part of this ImageCon, sharing how at Matter Supply we're working with images and specifically with Cloudinary. So let's talk a little bit about how using Cloudinary as a part of your toolchain, you can unlock the power of your team. So what's the power of your team? I'm going to say this is common for every single company. Teams are usually highly creative because around 70% of the time spent on a project is thinking how the project is going to be solved or is going to be finished or is going to be accomplished or scoped. And pretty much like roughly 30% of the time is spent on doing the actual development. That means any tool, any framework you bring in is going to support that 30% of the project, which is not too high. That doesn't make uh, too much sense. So if you want to improve the overall, like if you want to improve the 70% of the project, you don't, you, you don't need to just bring in tools and frameworks. You need to actually, and, or you are required to work on the mindset of the team. With that, I'm going to bring a quote I like. There is no single development in either technology or management technique, which by itself promises even one order of magnitude improvement in productivity, in reliability, or in simplicity. What that means is pretty much, we have a lot of tools, we have a lot of frameworks already. We have the jam stack that we love. But that is not making our lives any simpler. We are just moving concerns to a different part of the solution. We are moving the complexity. With that, I'm going to introduce another, another quote I love. Working with images is hard. So we realize that the challenges are always tough. And working with images is as tough as any challenge you may have in your plate. So if you don't pay attention to the imagery or how you're going to tackle the images in your project, you're going to have a hard time at the end of the project optimizing uh, like the, the load, like the weight of it. Uh, like, yeah, you're going to have a tough time like with, with all the images you're going to have in your plate. So with that, let's just give some examples on, on some challenges we are going to have or you may have. Let's say there is a client. And the client says, oh yeah, we need some personalized images to share on social networks. Like we want to bring user generated content. We want to bring the brand to, the, to, to social networks. But with that, we want to have like that connection to with, like, with the final user. That's a challenge. Another one, let's say we want to build a super fast website and we have super detailed pictures of our products with high photography quality. That should be fine also because the brand and the images, like that's, that's the thing that is actually representing the brand. So it should be fine to have like perfect images. Okay, but they are going to be super big. They are, like the load of them, of them is going to be super high. Let's move to another example. Let's say we have pictures that work super fine, but on desktop because of the aspect ratio. So funny fact, 53.81% uh, of the entire navigation is through mobile devices. 43.27% is uh, on desktop devices, leaving just roughly like at 2.92% on tablets. With that, the only thing I wanted to say is never forget about supporting different resolutions. Never forget about supporting mobile first. That's going to be where your most traffic is going to go through. Let's talk a little about another, let's say technical concerns. You need some catch. You need some CDNs that are closer to the users. You need to support different type of formats. And let's talk about a non-technical concern. That is kind of expensive, like working with CDNs, working with catch layers, working with like downloading things from the web, having a hard drive on the web, like on the cloud, that's going to drain your budget if you, do, if you didn't plan it like well enough. 
So let's take a look at some of the nice challenges we actually faced. This is the nice, the nice phase of working with images because all of this is just experimental, let's say. We had, or we've been having like two different type of challenges, like dealing with shareable videos or dealing with shareable images. So instead of playing around uh, with different techniques like Canvas, like JavaScript, like a lot of processing on the client side, we use Cloudinary Transformation API to create awesome assets that, that can be shared easily using, let's say, a server-side uh, rendered page, adding uh, the image itself as part of the metadata dynamically. That way, if you share the URL, like your user-generated content is going to be in. And you can start like sharing those assets like through social networks and keeping the brand, the brand, uh, like uh, positioning on 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 those social networks. But leaving the fun, the funny <laughs> challenges aside, the challenge we always have. Brands have the right to expect their images to be perfect. So pixelated images on their pages is just not cool. And with that, we have another challenge. We have, for example, the, the site load uh, in general, the site performance, uh, and the site speed, of course. So with that in mind, we start like moving forward and nicer to a nicer ecosystem. Instead of saying the clients that we are pretty much blocked by what technology allows, we decided like to change the mindset. So let's say we are, I'm going to give an example. Let's say we have a client. The client is fantastic company that hired me. Cool. So they want a solution for the cloud with a CMS, with awesome images, and a way to preview their changes before publishing them. I'm going to bring like a possible solution to the table is this is not the solution uh, or not the only solution. That's what I wanted to say because tons of solutions can actually go in. But I'm going to pick certain tools we know already. So for example, a solution for the cloud, I'm going to pick Netlify to do all the publishing. With a CMS, I'm going to pick Prismic to handle all the content. With awesome images, I'm going to pick Cloudinary then to start like processing those images. They want a way to preview their, ch their changes before publishing them. So let's say Prismic, now that we are using Prismic as an example. Prismic has a way to, to preview, like save documents, not publish one. What they do pretty much is they send a hash through a query a string, to a query string, and on that hash is the document temporary ID. So what they do is, if you are working with Gatsby, let's say to, to build your website, to statically generate your website, uh, Gatsby has some plugins you can add. You can add the uh, Gatsby source, Prismic GraphQL, that one supports the preview functionality because it's a specific JavaScript. So what they do is they do another request to their GraphQL API. And with Gatsby, that's a little tricky because you have the query already like on, let's say, your template or your page or, or whatever. You have the GraphQL query already in your code, and Gatsby pre-compiled uh, the site. And Gatsby has a way to know what's statically generated content and how to hydrate it with, with, uh, with, with the, cont the content itself, like with any transformation you have on, your, on the React side. So what the, what the plugin does pretty much is it's going to grab the query export of your page uh, and it's going to compile it again. So after rendering, it's going to call that again through Apollo and, and through GraphQL. What it does is great. Like it allows you to hydrate the content again and you're going to see a draft content, a just saved content. The problem with that is working with images. Prismic, Prismic has a basic way of working with images. Let's say basic transformations. Uh, 
you may actually want the power of Cloudinary. So you may end up adding something like the Cloudinary Transform or Gatsby Transform Cloudinary plugin. What that plugin does, they extend data on the Gatsby side. So the gateway, and with gateway I mean the Gatsby, the, sorry, the Prismic gateway, they doesn't know about the entire data. That's a, a problem. Because when they call the query again, when they compile the query and they call it back to Prismic, the data is not the same. The type definitions are not the same. So you're going to have a hard time there figuring out how to solve that. I'm going to go back, go back a little bit. We decided to change the mindset. We didn't continue improving Gatsby on the Gatsby side because that part is super nice. We need to simplify it back. So what we did was working on the tool set itself. So we have Graph Matter. We have a new gateway. That new gateway, the only thing that it's doing is federating a lot of services. This is just a screenshot. I have real code I'm going to show you in a second. But this is just to show you this is the actual gateway. This is the service. In theory, is Prismic. What we did was put in Prismic as a base and we start like federating other services on top of it. So Cloudinary is part of the service and it's going to be part of the type definitions. So it's part of your data in your server. Let's take a closer look at that now. So I have a, I have a site, I have an example I did for this uh, image call, like to showcase a little bit what we are doing. Let's take a little look at it. So this is it. It's a simple website, like you are not going to see uh, too much of it. Uh, it has lazy loading to load images, as you notice, like I can scroll down, but the images appear later. So I'm optimizing already the site load in general. That's an, a, a concern less, a le like a, that's a concern I can take out of my plate. But what I wanted to show you was not just that. This asset, like the original asset, it's super big. So what you are going to see here is this asset originally is 1,000 by 1,500 pixels. But the one I'm showing is just 375 by 562 pixels. That's already through Cloudinary. You are going to notice on the picture element that my images are being loaded through Cloudinary. Also, you are going to notice, you are going to notice that uh, the I'm using the fetch API to present the images, so I don't need to actually upload the image in Cloudinary. That's going to happen automatically. What I'm using is something called eager uh, upload or the eager fetch, let's say. And, and what that does is uh, I'm going, so the image, the original uh, or the place it's been placed originally is on the CMS side. So the content author is the one that is handling that, is managing that entirely. What my app is doing is on real time, like on the gateway, uh, on the server side, is going to link the source on the CMS with Cloudinary. And by doing that, it's using the Fetch API to create or to generate how the URL is going to look like. And using the Igor uh, async method, it's going to like give me back how the image metadata is going to look like when the transformation is over. But it's not really over, it's just happening. So I'm going to continue building my website, everything is going to be fine on my side, and we are going to continue with our life. It's going to be fast, my build is going to be fast, and the images can be super heavy. So what I was talking about was this. Sorry, this is uh, from, from Gatsby. This is my gateway. Right now it's, lo it's running just uh, locally because I need, like, I, I wanted like, to show just Cloudinary in this example. But on our gateway, we are pretty much integrating every single data source we have for a specific project. So we are taking the concern out of the front end 
and we are putting the concern on the server. That's pretty much the mindset we changed. And that way, we can keep, the th like we can keep things on the, on the client side or let's say on the web project simpler. So using Gatsby, you have your query and when, or you have your GraphQL or your graphical interface. And when you query the, the, the data from your server, it's going to be fully well defined. So you are going to see here on Graph Matter that I have my articles, I have my documents, I have article, and I have the image. Uh, and I have also a the type I did for, for testing something on the Cloudinary side. So you're going to notice like I have everything. All the definitions are there. And my Cloudinary illustration and my Cloudinary images or image is well defined on my gateway. This is huge. You, you don't imagine how big this is. Now I can keep my project super simple. Let's take a look at it. So I don't know if you are familiar with Gatsby or with Gatsby image, <clears throat> but that's it. My Gatsby image is just calling the fluid of the image and it's working. It already knows, it already knows what to do. It already knows how to present uh, all the source set, all like, the entire markup that is required. And it also has uh, lazy loading techniques that are happening. So this is the only thing I need to do. If I go higher, this component side by side is being called on the article itself. This is like the hero. So let's take a look at the article. The article has the query. It's super simple. It's a simple query. It's the same one you saw on the graphical interface. But pretty much what I'm doing is calling the fluid attribute. It's actually a, a function. I'm sending the max width I want, and it's going to give me everything I need to support the, Gats the Gatsby image. Let's move higher on my definition. Let's take a look at my package.json. It's a simple project. The only thing I have is my source GraphQL, and I have my Gatsby image. And I have also Gatsby background image because I have some background images working also there. That's it. I don't need uh, to start like add, piling up uh, different type of sources or transformations to the sources because that's the change on the mindset I was mentioning. We move that concern to the server. So as you noticed, I just have the source GraphQL. I don't have the transform Cloudinary or the, or the source Cloudinary. I don't have uh, the transform transformer sharp, the image sharp plugin. I don't have any of that because my data is coming fully integrated and it supports like the latest technologies. So now dream with me or dream with us. What we want to do in the future or what we are aiming to do is fixing all natural behaviors. Since the data is going to come clean and pure from the gateway, from the server side, we can allow any single, let's say, uh, provider, like CMS providers, uh, images, images providers, e-commerce providers, like we can let any provider to be creative, to do whatever they want, because they know what they are doing. Like on the CMS side, Contentful, Prismic, Graph, uh, Graph CMS, Data CMS, they know what to do. Like that's their core business. I don't want to jump in their core business because that's their, like, their, their, their knowledge is around that. Also on images, Cloudinary. Cloudinary knows what to do with the images. Cloudinary knows what to do with the transformations, what knows what to do with the CDNs, knows what to do if somebody from China uh, is fetching an image or somebody from Singapore is fetching for an image or if somebody from Europe or in Africa or in the United States or in Latin America, if somebody in general is trying to fetch for an image, Cloudinary knows. They have like tons of CDNs around the world and they know which one to actually uh, deliver and they know how to catch and they know how to work with images in general. So 
what I want to do is fix all natural behaviors. If Prismic wants to bring a preview functionality with a more JavaScript, they can, because the data is going to come clean from the gateway. If Contentful wants to do the same and they want to start like, I don't know, using the draft, uh, uh, the preview API uh, to build like a, a real-time preview or something like that, uh, they, they can also build something like that. We can let them do what they know. So by moving the concern to the server, we are allowing every provider to continue improving in their core. Let's say we want the data to be simple. It's possible now because we can simplify the data as much as we want on the server side. The app shouldn't care. The app shouldn't care if I have a CMS or if I have Cloudinary or if I have multiple CMSs. Like that can actually happen. Let's say we have multiple uh, departments or areas in my company. Every single one of them can have their own, C their, their own CMS instance. Not just the instance, perhaps the technology, perhaps the marketing department loves Contentful, and perhaps the, the, the I don't know, the service, the customer services support uh, department ha loves Prismic or Data CMS to manage specific content. Perhaps they love a different type of tools. Perhaps some of them love Hotspot to keep a track of, of a subscriptions or things like that. Another may like a MailChimp, for example. So that can happen, like we can make the data super simple. I'm dreaming super big. I know we are like focusing a little bit more on how to work with images, but that's a part of it. That's a piece of it, a super important one, but it's a concern we are already solving. From this point on, we can dream. Like now that we are solving the biggest concerns, we can dream even bigger. But the project itself, I don't think it's going to go and be super simple because we are actually moving the concern to a more difficult area or to a different type of uh, problems. But with that, what I'm saying is we can actually tackle more of a client solution because we are bringing a base on what we can do already. That's the team of Matter Supply. I'm super proud of each one of them. Like every single one of them has been working super tough on understanding how the web works. And you can ask anybody uh, on the team, working with images, it's our biggest challenge and also our biggest responsibility because Matter Supply is super aware that the brand should not compromise its quality on the web. Thank you very much.